Okay, we're back. Let's see if we can get the legend in. A lot of unable to joins. What's popping? Oh, oh, oh. Uh-oh. Hello. Oh, we made it. It doesn't I've been matter. watching you for eight minutes. You've been watching me for eight minutes? Awesome, because I was pure stalling for eight complete minutes, pulling that out of my my ass. Let, let's I just sent you a few comments so you can go through later. <laughs> okay, okay. See, that was the thing. I'm trying to scroll through, and I keep getting stuck with, like, people putting egghead comments and stuff like that. <laughs> Why are you laughing so hard at that? that, that you can't I laugh. know how this goes. I know yeah. how this goes. Yeah, so so thank you for having me on your live. Honestly, I, like we're just going to get this out of the way. When this whole quarantine started, um, when the whole quarantine started and I started doing these and they were like, well, who do you want? Who do you like? Who like who do you want to get on the hair? Your name was at the top of the list. So here we are. Quarantine's almost over. And we got you on. I am so excited. Thank you. What so an much. honor. Thank you no. for saying that. Thank you for having we, me. We slash me. I am honored. <laughs> uh, I am honored. Don't and just ignore all the egghead comments that you don't see <laughs> pop up over there. It's not funny. <laughs> oh, you're being they, trolled. I see it. Oh, they, it, but they know it. They know it because I talk about it and we laugh and joke. So you're just gonna see eggs pop up just so you're not <laughs> you're not unaware of what's so going good. on. Um First of all, again, thank you for joining me. Um, you know, I've been such a huge fan of you and your team for so, so long. I know a lot of people say this, but let me give you an example. I was in London by myself just traveling when um, the U.S. Women's National Team, you guys beat Brazil. And then I took a flight to Germany, a solo flight, and I was by myself. And then I went and watched unfortunately, the loss versus Japan. So I was there as a lone member with a backpack and a one day hotel to go and watch you guys. And to me, you guys are, okay, the men's basketball team, one thing, but I think that you guys <laughs> are, you guys are the best representatives of our country as far as sports. And I love how outspoken you guys, especially are when it comes to women's sports. And I think you guys are the most dominant. Like I, I love watching your team and, and, and you guys and what you guys have meant. And to see you in particular and so many of your teammates be so outspoken about what's going on in this country. Um, when, when did you, and you guys have always been this way and you particular, what are some of the things that, that you, know, you have noticed and that you have felt compelled to speak out against? Obviously you guys have done so much for the, for the women's game and even speaking on equality. Why is it that you were really passionate about it, about speaking out about, you know, just overall equality? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I mean, for myself, I was raised in a household that we talked about, you know, gender equality, racial equality, um, and these social movements that were going on. And that came directly from my parents. Mm -hmm. um, and so, it, you know, justice and knowing that, um, you know, my perspective as a minority across different um, categories and also as a privileged person with a great opportunity and a great upbringing um, always felt like a responsibility. It was the responsibility my parents wanted for me. Um, and so when I, um, you know, joined the U.S. Women's National Team and got this platform, it's, you know, the number one thing that I want out of playing sports is to be able to create um, a positive impact on our society and use my platform in a positive way, but also to share inspiration and share joy and uh, share a story of working hard to succeed your, to achieve your goals and succeed. Um, and so I think I feel um, like at this moment is so important because it is an attempt from us collectively to turn a tragedy into a revolution and um, a movement that's you know bigger than it was last month and bigger than it was two months ago. Although the same injustices uh, were happening then, 
Um, and mm -hmm. so this moment is so special because people have been fighting for so long for equality um, for all for all people in all different groups. And I think that we're in um, this moment of awakening where people who have been asleep are are listening and are having these conversations. It, and it's beautiful to see the collective action and, and the inspiration. Yeah, no, that that's so well said. When you can turn a moment into a movement, and, and um, you know, you and so many of your teammates have been a part of that movement well before this moment. So I, I applaud you. You talk about using your platform, and you know, you and your teammates, you guys started. Um, now again, I don't know how to say. Is it re ink? Re is it re ink? Re -ink. What? Re -ink. re ink. Yeah. Oh, okay. So re ink. I didn't want to get that wrong. Um, what was the idea behind it? How did you guys come about this? What are you guys trying to accomplish with reading? Please share with the world, share with me. Yeah, I love, I love our restory because it's so relevant to what we were just talking about. I think it was sparked from um, winning the World Cup in 2015 um, and coming home to such support um, and such amazing reception from everyone um but also coming back and realizing that uh we weren't feeling like we were fairly compensated for what we had accomplished mm -hmm. and so it really sparked our team um and our fight for equality um and pay equality specifically and a few of us wanted to take that even further. So while we fight against the structures that are, you know, holding uh, certain groups back, we also want to fight for things. Mm -hmm. um, and so Re-Inc. is fighting for change mm -hmm. um, and, and has the bold mission of reimagining the status quo. That's what mm -hmm. we set out to do, uh, which is a really bold and broad purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, from the perspectives that we all have, we have different, um, the different times where we might want to focus on different elements of that change making. Um, so we left room for that fluidity because there's, you know, the intersectionality of the different um, social movements is so important. And so mm -hmm. what we're trying to do as a business is, um, is fight for that justice in a very complete total way. Um, starting with, you know, the economic freedom of people is the social freedom of people. And so, you know, women owned businesses are super important minority owned businesses and, and in diversity and inclusion are so important. So that's kind of the core of what we're doing. And we're creating products and services for people who want to be change makers in their own right. And so the uniform and the tools and the experiences and the events uh, for them to get the strength in their own in their own worlds and in their own individuality to be change makers. It's what we're so working well towards. Said. So <laughs> well said. So well said. Like honestly just ladies and gentlemen, if you guys aren't sitting back and soaking this up, this is what it means to make an impact, to use your platform, come up with ideas based off of your platform that you're passionate about. Doesn't matter how big, doesn't matter how small, but this is a golden example. Um, what was it about becoming an entrepreneur? Uh, is that something that's always kind of been in you? Like, Because so much now they talk about athletes. Like, so me, I started to I started to do more broadcasting when I was still playing because this was something that I wanted to segue into when I was retired. Is this something that you see yourself, you know, I know you're in the middle of your career right now, but is this is something that you want to do as you continue and as you push forward? So I never thought about entrepreneurship mm -hmm. ever growing up. I, you know, I love to write. I have all these other passions and I never thought I would be in business never appealed to me. Um, but change making did. And uh -huh. I think as you know, we started kind of re upping our players association, it was sort of like running a little business. And then I started to see the components of business are like leadership and creating a team and these collaborative uh, cultural things that are really important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm obsessed with it. I mean, you ask anyone this is I run this business from morning till night every day. I barely have time to train anymore. Like I've, yeah. I've, I've lost it and I've found it. Um, but I really, really love it. And I definitely think that, um, you know, this is what I will be doing. And I think, um, you know, as being a current athlete and an entrepreneur, I've actually found this amazing balance where I, I have a bit more perspective in my playing because mm -hmm. I'm doing something else. And I have a bit more perspective in my business because I'm doing something else. Yeah. And so what I thought would be like pulling from each other are actually very much adding to each other. And, mm -hmm. it, and it's, it's really working on both ends, I think.
Well, and one thing that uh, I've told people uh, when they're entering into retirement or space or, you know, even like you were talking about as an entrepreneur, and a lot of times we've been told to focus on basketball or focus on your sport or when you, there's that idea of when you start to go do something else, it's going to take away from your actual craft. And it's like, no, it actually helps you become a better leader. If you're running a business and you're having to deal with people and understanding that you have to talk to people certain ways and you have to motivate people different ways, I think being an entrepreneur and a business person actually helps you become a better leader on the floor, helps you hold yourself accountable. You know, so like so many of these things that you have said perfectly, I agree. I think athletes, the more they expand themselves and the more they work on other passions will allow them to bring that back to their craft. And so, um, you know, yeah, I think, I think amazing. actually what you're saying is like one of the big barriers that we want to break with this business is this idea that an athlete's just like one thing, mm -hmm. like an athlete's not one thing, like humans are complex and like we can do so many different things and it's not a zero sum world. Yeah. It's a world of abundance. And if you're, you know, using your energy positively in one space, it actually grows your positive energy in the other space. So that, mm. that's kind of my fundamental belief in it. And in starting this business, like wanting to show that, wanting to show that as I've started this business, I've actually become a better player to mm. kind of prove the point that like that is like a label or a box that's put on athletes, but it's yeah. not true. Well, and it's so funny because you know this all of our lives, as much as we've been passionate about sports, this, the first thing they tell you is like, well, sports isn't this, always have a backup plan, always have a backup plan. And I can't believe I'm about to quote Iman Shumpert, one of my former teammates, but he was like, everyone always told me to have a backup plan. Basketball is not guaranteed. And then as soon as I had a backup plan while I was <laughs> playing basketball, they were like, well, you're not focused on your sport anymore. And it was like, people, this is why you should all just shut the hell up and just mind your own business. Can't win. Can't win. <laughs> can't win is like you want me to have a backup plan when i'm 15 years old and then when i'm 25 years old and i develop a backup plan you're just like well you should one put out the door part. yeah yeah exactly. it's those people are idiots i hate them all <laughs> uh, you know i have made a living not listening to other people so you know, I, I, I respect every single thing that you do. Um, I don't want to take up too much more of your time because obviously we're going to continue seeing more and more eggs pop up the longer and longer <laughs> I talk. So, and, and your laughter says everything. Uh, so we're going to play a game. It's about your teammates. Uh -oh. uh, and we're going to say it's teammate, uh, teammates and we're going to play a game. Are you ready? Oh, <laughs> It's super childish. Oh, this is when, okay. I, when, I say, when I say on this, when I say on the scale of, of one to ten, how intense these questions are, it's like a zero. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Most likely to forward your call immediately and text you. To forward my call? Yeah, like you call them and they forward you away, but send you, but send you a text. Oh gosh, I don't call anybody. Perfect. <laughs> it's me. That's, it. That's the answer. It's you. Are you? You can say yourself. You're a part of this. You can say this. You're a part of it. All right. Who is the most reckless in the group chat? Oh, Pino. Pino. Yeah. Pino's that's reckless. that's that's fair. Um, who is most likely to leave you with the check at dinner? Ooh, to leave me with the check at dinner. I don't think anyone would do that on this team. That's fair. Just split right down the middle. I know you're lying. It's okay. Because you don't want to call me right now. <laughs> no, honestly. Thought, no, honestly, I, there's. It's not like who it is, but like, can I say that name? Can should I, I can say I, that I, name? No, I honestly can't think of a good answer for you. And I will have to say my teammates are very generous. So that that's that's you know what? That's why you're Lucky a great me. teammate because, because you won't <laughs> tell the truth. Because you won't tell the truth. All right. Uh who's most likely to have the wittiest comebacks? Oh, Crystal. She's got her she's quick witted for sure. Quick witted. Mm -hmm. Sharp, quick. Okay. Shout out to Crystal. Uh who's most likely to be late to everything? Oh gosh. And now for <laughs> athletes and for athletes I say this with this question. Those people that are just on time. Like if the bus leaves at five o'clock, they're on that bus at four fifty nine every time. Gosh, that's probably also me. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm I'm always running to catch up. Okay. That's fair. You can you you're included in this. That's fair. Um who's most likely uh to become president? Pino. 
you know. She's yeah. like halfway there. Yeah, she's halfway there. I I'd, I'd vote for her. So that's exactly. you know, I'd vote for her. Uh, who's most likely to talk trash on the field? Ooh, see, this is this I could go on forever. We've got Kelly talks okay. a lot of trash. Sonnet talks a lot of trash. Although, yeah, her her trash talk's funny. Um, what, what what's so funny about her trash talk? Well, you know what? She's kind of sweet to me. Like when we're playing in the league against each other, she kind of like says nice things to me to like distract me. Yeah. <laughs> wow, your hair looks so nice. Yeah. And then she's it's like, rever like it's oh, reverse okay. trash talk. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but it works. I, I listen. So. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. All right, who's most likely to Postmates or Uber Eats every meal? Every single one of us. I, mean, <laughs> I, I prefer caviar, but um, almost every night. Um, Can you order caviar on Postmates or Uber Eats? Have you done that before? Oh, like the food caviar? Yeah. I meant the service caviar, <laughs> which, which is like a Postmates. Um, I've, never even, not, I've never even heard of caviar. I'm not oh. ordering my caviar. I was like, are you ordering caviar? Is that a thing? Is that like, look, you guys are the best team in the world. Maybe you know something that I don't no, know. I, I, know. I mean, the quality of caviar you'd get out of Uber Eats would be quite worse. <laughs> okay, fair, fair. All right. Who's most likely to play pranks on someone? Oh, we got a whole group of pranksters. I am not involved in that. Um, Kelly, give me a good, give me a good prank where you were like, "Yeah, I don't ever want to be involved in what that game is." Was oh, there a prank? I, yeah, I never want to be involved. You know, there's, I mean, we've got Ali Long who's like hiding with her shoes on in people's beds, and oh, that's freaky. You know, we, you guys have seen it on their stories. They're they're yeah. pulling pranks all the time. Okay, that's a good one. Who's most likely to believe anything? Most gullible person on the squad? Ooh, I'm going to have to think about this. Take your time. Got nowhere to go. Gosh, little Mal. Or okay. she's Mal. She's gullible. Yeah. But I think that she trusts me, so I have to but take, I have to take that's that. Endearing. Endearing. That's endearing. Gullible, gullible is a redeeming. It, like, that is you're a very, right. very trusting. nice quality. That Optimistic. means you're just, that, yeah, you're optimistic, you trust people, you believe them. But we don't want to say gullible, but it's just more of like, you can you can sell them on almost anything. Yeah. Is Trusting it Mal? Mal, yeah. Okay, okay, Mal. Uh, all right. Most likely to make anyone laugh? Or funniest teammate? I felt like that question was a little confusing for me. I mean, Pino and, and probably Crystal. Crystal. Yeah. Those are the two. Those are the ones yeah. that keep everything I mean, light. Yeah, they good vibes in the locker room. I personally enjoy their humor because I'm a little bit picky. I don't like like the mean jokes. I like just like the sweet jokes, you know? Yeah. So I think they are universally funny and witty all the time. And they never turn off. Never turn off. <laughs> <laughs> the people that just keep it going at all points and yeah. times. Yeah. Well well. Chris, I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, I've been a big fan for a very long time of you and your team. I love everything that you're doing. I love the way you're using your platform. And you are not only setting up your platform right now uh, for what you're doing, but the job and, and the businesses that you're starting are, are also helping to set up future change. And I think that is the ultimate, ultimate compliment for any athlete. What you do now and what you are setting yourself up for the future, you are a perfect example of that. So thank you so much for joining me. Is there any, anything that you want to give a shout out? Is there any other businesses, anything that you're working on, any projects that you have coming up? Well, my AirPod. Yeah. Um, no, just to say thank you to you. Uh, this was a joy, it's a pleasure uh, to have good conversation, meaningful conversation, and a little bit of fun in this really hard time. So yeah. appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you, and I'll see you soon. See you soon.